All right, so blank game here. Um, so a quick reminder of how this all works. You're going to have sprites. Those are your pictures that you deal with. You're going to have objects. Those are the things that actually do stuff in your game. And then rooms are your levels, at least to begin with. So the beginnings of the catch game, you have some object that runs around using, I'm going to do the arrow keys. So I'm going to create a new sprite, load in something. Oh, what should I load? I'm going to just do some of the basic ones. Bear. A bear. Of course I need a bear. I'm going to name it bear underscore s. Something important that happens in Game Maker 2. You want to make sure that your names do not use spaces. Because if you're typing in a line of code, if the name has a space in it, it thinks that it's two different objects or two different variables or two different names. So you want to make sure that if you are trying to put in some sort of space, use an underscore. The other thing that matters is you want to make sure that your sprites Objects, variables, all have different names, unique from each other. So one reason I put on this underscore s at the end is to make sure that it's very clear just by looking at this, this is the sprite, not the object. And that way, GameMaker doesn't get confused either. So if I'm talking about an object, it doesn't try and change your sprite on you instead. All right, bear sprite. So now I'm going to create an object. This is the bear underscore o object. It has that particular sprite. Once again, I am going to use the events that I used before. So for example, a key press to the left. Now normally, I would have used one of these drag and drop icons. But being a much more advanced person than that, I'm going to instead do something in scripts. That's all under control is where all the coding happens. There is this one with a green arrow here, which is to execute a script. We're going to get into that next class. Basically, you would use that if you have a piece of code you use over and over and over again, which will happen in our next project, which is Tetris. For this one, we're just going to do this execute code. So I'm going to drag that in. And it launches a little um, coding screen here. All right, so to move left, I have to know something about GameMaker. And in particular, it's that. GameMaker's objects have some built-in variables. For example, there's an X position. There is a Y position. Each of these things dictates where an object actually is. It has speed. It has direction. All of these variables are built in, and I can refer to them directly. So in particular, if I'm going left, there is a variable called hSpeed built into GameMaker, which I'm going to set to, I don't know, negative 5. Keeping in mind that to the right is positive H speed and to the left is negative H speed. And then GameMaker, of course, has an upside down Y axis, right? So going down is positive Y and up is negative Y. So this is a basic assignment statement. I take a variable, it's on the left side of an equal sign, and then I set the value I'm going to put it in as on the right side. And then I put in a semicolon. GameMaker is a little bit lenient in that it doesn't always require a semicolon, but it's probably good practice to do that. Upper and lowercase matters. If I put in a capital H, H speed, that doesn't work. So make sure you're paying attention to upper and lowercase letters as you're doing this. All right, so H speed should become negative 5 when I press left. I've been like coding for a good like three minutes, and I haven't actually launched the game yet, so I should do that. So I'm going to create a new room. Hey, look, it's a room. It's a bear. I'm going to run it. It's a bear. I press the left key. That's awesome. Best game ever. Uh, all right. So I would like to do more than that, obviously. So some things I would like to do is I would like to set it so that when he stops, like when I press uh, let up on the left key, I'd like him to stop. So I want to do a key release left as well. And there I'm going to say h speed equals 0. So I'm going to need similar code for going up and down and right as well. So going down, it's going to be v speed, which is another built-in variable, which stands for your vertical speed. Going down is positive v-speed, going up is negative v-speed, and when you release on those, you're going to want to set the v-speed to zero. So let me do that real quick. So if you're using WASD, go ahead and do that. So key press right, h-speed 
equals five. Key release, right? Eight speed equals zero. Key press up. B speed equals negative five. Key release up. B speed equals zero. Key press down. B speed equals five. Key release down. B speed equals zero. Yes, I do type fast. You'll get used to it. Now you may notice that as you're typing, you're going to get kind of a red error on the side. And it's trying to help you there by saying, hey, that's not correct. So if I do H speed and a bunch of other stuff, notice that it's no longer highlighted. That means that that's not a built-in variable. It'll turn kind of reddish on my screen if it's built in. Occasionally it'll turn red if you have a syntax error as well. Uh, syntax error means that you've you got a wrong symbol in there or you're not quite saying that particular line correctly. I'm paranoid, so I'm going to test this. Good. All right, so V speed and H speed, how on earth did I know that those things existed? Well, one way you can find out is if you go into the help menu under contents, the very bottom section is the game maker language. It might be worthwhile taking a look at some of the beginning sections of this. So some things you can do. So variables are important. Assignments. This is the basic syntax of how an assignment works. You take the variable and you say it equals whatever you're going to do. You can put mathematical expressions over here. So you could do 5 plus 10 and it would actually figure that out for you. If we're talking about other things, I don't know if you remember last year, but there was something called an avatar um, that we started with, and there was something chasing our avatar, so we had to say avatar.x or avatar.y. You're referring to another object by using this period command. There's also a global command. So if I want a variable that exists throughout the entire game, rather than belonging to one particular object, you can say global dot and then the name of variable. So vSpeed, what does vSpeed do? So here's a bunch of stuff about moving around. I just went into the index and started typing vSpeed. So we have an x position, y position. So these two are built in, x and y, we knew that. x previous and y previous are built in. So on the current step, that's the position you were last step. That's kind of nice to know. X start and Y start. So it actually saves off where you were created. H speed and B speed. Hey, that was what I was looking for. There's also direction, speed. Every object has friction and gravity built into it. So there's a variety of things you can do here. Now there is a convenient um, thing I've put in the README, which is a drag and drop to GML reference. So if I go into GameMaker 2, there's this folder in there called drag and drop to GML reference. And if you open up this very first HTM, which is a web page, if I go further down, hey look, when I want to say move fixed or move free, there's a command called motion set and you give it the direction and speed. Now you don't say direction and speed, you replace those two things with numbers. And generally speaking, any time that we had some command where we would fill in blanks in the drag and drop command, we just f replace these named things in here with what we would fill in. So speed horizontal, that sounds familiar. There's h speed and you set it equal to whatever it's going to be. V speed, set it to be whatever it's going to be. So if you really do understand the drag and drop commands really well and you just want to know how to translate that, a lot of those commands are in here. Occasionally they have to 
put in other things, like there's a series of steps. For example, transform sprite. You actually have to set up all of those things to make it match up. There's not just one command that does exactly the same thing. All right, so that's a couple of ways of doing reference, actually going into the help file and figuring it out. Out on the readme, I've got this uh, set of files, and you're free to copy that if you want.